First at Five. From the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. Lon London copes with a lone wolf terror attack one year after an ISIS cell targeted Brussels. And the Ocala woman accused of running over a UF student makes her first appearance in an Alachua County courtroom. London police say four people, including the suspected attacker and a police officer, are dead after a terrorist incident near Parliament. That's our top story. It's March 22nd. I'm Evan Moon. And I'm Maggie Lorenz. Thank you for joining us. Authorities say a driver mowed down pedestrians, then stabbed a police officer before being shot. NBC's Kelly Cabea reports from London. It went down early in the afternoon today, right in the center of London at the Houses of Parliament. The first indication that something was going wrong, sounds of an accident on Westminster Bridge. That's how eyewitnesses describe it. And then I see that one car smashed to the wall and just people started running all over. Several people hit by a driver in a car on that bridge. Then the car crashed into the gates at the Parliament building. The driver got out holding a knife and tried to get into the Parliament building. In the process of doing that, he stabbed an officer who was guarding Parliament. He was then shot by police. Sadly, I can confirm that now four people have died. That includes the police officer who was protecting Parliament and one man we believe to be the attacker who was shot by a police firearms officer. We also understand now from the foreign ministry in France that French students were among the injured. At least three French students who were here on a school trip on Westminster Bridge and hit by that car. Streets are closed in central London. The investigation continues. Having said that, Met Police say they believe there was only one attacker. Today was also marks the one year anniversary of the Brussels terror attacks. Tearful airport staff observed a minute of silence, holding hands and comforting each other as the Brussels terminal fell silent to honor the victims of the deadly 2016 attacks. Belgium's King Philip urged citizens to listen to each other and draw lessons from the deadly madness. With countless victims around the world, you shared this deep wounds caused by deadly madness. Let me put to you this one conviction. It is the responsibility of each and every one of us to make our society more humane and more just. More than 300 people were injured and 32 people killed in the Brussels airport in a subway a year ago. Survivors of the Pulse nightclub mass shooting are taking legal action. A lawsuit filed today on behalf of 55 survivors and their families is targeting Omar Mateen's employer and his widow. The lawsuit claims Mateen's employer was aware of his mental instability and his wife could have alerted authorities. And the woman charged with DUI manslaughter and the death of a UF student was denied a bond reduction this afternoon. Judge James Cola denied the motion from Damaris Guerrero Garcia in her first Alachua County court appearance. Her defense attorney argued that Guerrero Garcia's bond is set too high, saying the amount is more than four times her annual salary as a U.S. Marine. He also referenced her crime-free past, but jo Judge Cola was not persuaded. The court has serious uh, concerns about her limited ties to this circuit, uh, this area, as well as um, significant concern, concerns for the protection of the community. Guerrero Garcia's bond amount remains at $200,000. Her next court date has not yet been set. It was cool the past few mornings, but I noticed it was much warmer for our start today. And it's maybe been warming up a little too much. This afternoon was actually pretty hot. WT WUFT's Grayson Jarvis joins us from the Weather Center to tell us how long these warm conditions will last. Well, it's certainly been warmer these past few days than average for our region for this time of year. Temperatures as high as 89 degrees in some areas. Let's go ahead and look at the temperatures out right now. So 87 degrees in Gainesville, 86 in Ocala, and 90 degrees in Bronson. So a region is hitting 90 in some parts of North Central Florida. Let's go ahead and look at the forecast for the rest of this evening, the hour by hour. By 6 p.m., we're down to 84. 8 p.m., it starts to drop a little bit more, add to 71. By 10 p.m., we're down to 68. Be, the temperature drop begins to taper off a little bit. And by 4 a.m., when people are getting up and getting ready to go to work, at, we'll be at 65 degrees for under mostly cloudy skies. And there we have about a 10% chance of precipitation throughout the night, but... 
shouldn't be a too significant. And coming up, I'm going to be showing you about this front that will be moving through that will be dropping our temperatures significantly for tomorrow afternoon. Back to you. Thank you. The former director of the Federal Emergency Management Agency, Craig Fugate, stepped down from his position in Washington and moved back to his hometown here in Alachua County. Fugate is a local success story. He started as a lieutenant for the Alachua County Fire Rescue. He was then given the position of Florida's deputy director for emergency management during one of the most devastating hurricane seasons in the state's history. President Barack Obama then nominated him as the FEMA director in 2009 to help administer emergency responses for all national disasters, ranging from earthquakes to terror attacks. I got the chance to sit down and talk with Fugate yesterday. As Trump considers his replacement, what do you think are some attributes that um, a, a successful uh, FEMA director needs? I think it's a bias towards action. The most perishable, most precious commodity in disaster response is time, and you never get it back. So you want somebody who has the bias towards action that can synthesize a lot of different variables very quickly and know when to push the system to go now versus waiting for a formal request for assistance. And it's that ability to understand the processes and time frames, the risk and the hazards to make good informed decisions. But uh, the one thing you don't want is somebody who's more focused on having all the information to make the perfect decision because it takes too long. Sometimes good enough is all you'll get in a fast response. With hurricane season just two months away, are you concerned that um, there isn't a named director? What are the biggest threats and concerns coming into no, that? No, um, we, I think we did our job of making sure that FEMA was equipped, staffed with the right expertise and the right senior career officials to lead the agency until the Trump administration were able to select an administrator. He said he wouldn't expect the Trump administration to choose their new FEMA administrator, administrator for at least six months. He is enjoying his time back in Gainesville and plans to continue emergency management for the state of Florida. In the debate over sanctuary cities, the Trump administration is now highlighting every place that's even the slightest bit uncooperative with ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement. In the latest weekly report, Alachua County made a top 10 list with just five cases of not holding someone on a detainer request. When it's just a request with no warrant or court order, current Florida law allows sheriffs to make the call. It's hard for me to figure out where they got their numbers from, and you can do a lot with numbers, but the bottom line is as long as we're doing things on the up and up and abiding by what the courts tell us is, is legal and good to go with, I'm very confident in they can put us on any number of lists they want, and you know, we, we still uh, will continue to do a good job. But the new sheriff in Clay County is hoping to leave the uncooperative list. Daryl Daniels says they'll comply with detainer requests as long as they can coordinate a handoff so people are not stuck in jail beyond their release dates, which could trigger county liability. Gainesville residents are actively reporting problems around the area using the 311 GNV app. This app allows residents to submit requests for assistance with any city issue. The app allows people to remain anonymous when they submit these issues. There have been more than 10 reports of people parking in yards using 311 GNV over the last seven days. The issues reported are looked over and responded to by Gainesville officials. Hours, you have a citation and you have to pay. It's kind of ridiculous. We have no other use for that area. So unless there's like an actual reason, I'd like to hear it because there's no street parking around here for at least four blocks. And I don't know where else people are supposed to park. Residents who have been cited report the roads they live off of are too small and narrow to have guests park on, only leaving the option of parking in the yards. Other problems reported on the app include broken water lines, rusty fire hydrants, and cracked curbs. For Gainesville's population of roughly 130,000 people, the 311 GNV app is not commonly known, showing less than 500 downloads on the Google Play Store. The city of Dinellon is facing budget decisions that could lead to defunding its fire department. Some community members are hoping to prevent this from happening. WUFT's Elizabeth Del Carmen joins us live from the newsroom. The Dinellon City Council voted not to move forward with a fire assessment, which leaves alternatives like contracting for service on the front burner. Meanwhile, community efforts to keep the fire department up and running are forming, even if it means an increase in taxes. In the small city of Dunellen, the fire department may face defunding. 
After a survey of property owners showed resistance to a tax increase, the City Council is now considering alternatives. A group of community members on Facebook are hoping to save the local fire service. The ultimate goal is we want the city to realize that they should not close the fire department because it will be detrimental to the health of the citizens and their livelihood. Alternatives to increasing taxes include contracting with Marion County for fire rescue services. Now we're up there to try to make sure that the city runs as efficiently as we can and we need to make decisions based on real world physical information and not emotional. Community members are concerned that without the Nellan station, first responders would be too far away. But the city council points to an existing county station north of town on Highway 41. To put things into perspective, if I drive from the Nellan Fire Department down to one of the nearby fire stations, I arrive at Marion County Fire Rescue, a five-minute drive. Dillon says the city is trying to deal with death and contracting with the county would save the city about $180,000 a year. He says they'll have to balance the budget one way or the other. And if the citizens of Dun Owen came in and said, okay, we're going to each give $1,000 a year so that we can have a fire department, that's fine with me. The Facebook page aimed at saving the fire department is trying to gather people to attend a city council meeting in April. A tax hike to keep city service might cost the Nellan residents $150 more a year. Reporting live from the newsroom, Elizabeth Del Carmen, WUFT News. Coming up, we'll tell you how a Florida bill will make it easier for locals to get their hands on craft beers. And coming up, I'm going to tell you about how much you can expect this front to drop temperatures tomorrow.